All right, so we own a 142 unit facility over here. And in today's video, I wanna talk a little bit about the pros and cons of owning a storage facility. Some of the things that I like and some of the things that I don't like. Okay, now it's gonna be really loud over here because we got a highway right there. But one of the first things I wanna note, 142 units and what don't we see? We don't see any tenants anywhere. Now a quick side note while I'm over here, some of the things that you're gonna to wanna to consider when buying a storage facility is the location. Location is absolutely crucial, I would say, when buying a storage facility. Location means so much because unfortunately there's a lot of competitors in this market and people are usually gonna to go to the storage facility which they're closest to. Now that doesn't mean that if the facility is located in a small town, that's necessarily a bad investment. In fact, this 142 unit storage facility that I own here is located in a town of less than 2000 people. All right, back in the air conditioning. So like I was saying, we have 142 units here and we don't see any tenants. Now I'm not saying there's anything wrong with seeing tenants or dealing with tenants, but it is awfully nice showing up to your property and not actually seeing anyone. The majority of your interactions with tenants are gonna be just on the phone or possibly over email and text. Another pro I wanna mention is just the ability to automate your facility. Now, 10, 15 years ago, it was very common for managers to collect payments via cash or you know over the counter at possibly a local um, office. Maybe they had a spot designated for an office and someone manned the facility and they collected rent that way. Well, today with the technology that we have, it's pretty much done 100% online. Now I'm gonna show you something crazy that happened over here that you would never suspect at a storage facility. So wait until you see that, some idiot. Uh, but back to the automation. So the way that we manage the storage facility is we have a website set up, the front end, and when someone wants to rent a unit, they call our phone number or they go to our website. Typically when they call us, we just say, hey, jump to our website. And on our website, you're gonna see something, so, uh, something called um, available units. You're gonna click on that. It's gonna show you a list of the units that we have available, the prices, and then if you wanna rent one, you just click rent now, put in your information, um, put your credit card, debit card, checking account information in there, and then you're gonna be able to rent the unit right online. Now, what's awesome about this is it captures all their information for us. We're not typing this in for them. And then next month when they owe rent again, it's, the system is automatically gonna charge their credit card or their checking account. So this building right here and the one right over here was built way back in the 19, early 1990s. So that's going on, well, actually well over 25 years ago now. And I wanted to bring up the point of, you're buying a metal box. There's not a whole, long, whole lot that can go wrong with these things. Um, some of the things that are probably gonna go wrong first are the doors because they are treated you know, fairly poorly by residents. Um, you know, it's just what happens. They go up and down, they bang into stuff, and, you know, people don't really care about them. I don't know if you can tell, though, that unit door has been replaced with a new one. So that door is likely 20-some years old, and that one is brand new. And what you're going to do is you're going to just call the company, the manufacturer that made it. They're all pretty much standard sizes. You're going to order it. They're really easy to reinstall, and you're good to go. So there's not a ton of repair and maintenance items that you're gonna see on a storage facility. Now, typically if you're buying something like an apartment building or even a mobile home park, you're gonna have an expense ratio of, well, with apartments probably close to 50%, maybe a little bit under that. Meaning if you're gonna make $100,000 of uh, gross income, you're gonna see about 50,000 of that go back out towards expenses like repairs, maintenance, taxes, insurance. With a storage facility, it's a lot less than that. Uh, you know, it's obviously going to depend on the size of it, how you're running it, but this 142 unit right here, we don't have anyone on site. It's all done remotely and it's all done online. Our expense ratio for a property like this is somewhere in the upper 20s, somewhere like that. So it's a lot less um, expense uh, intense as something like an apartment building. 
Now, another thing that you're gonna want to check out um, when you're buying a facility, one of the other things that could go wrong with them is the screws on the roof can become, there's a seal that goes around them. You know, obviously it's a round screw with a little gasket. And when that gasket gets tightened down and sits there and cooks in the sun for 20 years, oftentimes it's gonna become brittle and it may potentially cause leaks. So if possible, if you can get inside as many vacant units as possible, look at the floors, look for stains. Um, it's sometimes gonna be hard to tell if it's an oil stain or an actual water stain. Um, but preferably if you can go and inspect the property when it's pouring rain, that is the absolute best case scenario. So when it comes to rain, that's the next point I wanted to talk about. Water is gonna be your biggest enemy. Um, and with storage facilities, you know, it's a metal building. So, you know, hopefully it's all gonna be buttoned up besides those screws at the top. However, you really gotta watch the drainage. How is the water running off the roads and where is it all going in a really big downpour? Now this facility was laid out really poor because we've got this slope running all downhill and it's running right to the base of the storage facility doors. So that's something you gotta watch out. You wanna make sure that you're gonna be able to correct those issues, get the water running the right direction and, and getting out there. Because the last thing you want is uh, water to pool in front of the doors and worse, get inside the units themselves. The next thing I wanna talk about quickly is the locks. This is something you really need to pay attention to when you're looking to buy a facility. Go inspect the doors. Do they have a lock similar to this where the tenant is gonna have a key and the lock is actually incorporated into the door? Or are they gonna have a lock like this that is an external lock that they provide themselves? Now, a lock like this, you as the owner, you're gonna have to have a copy of the key to give them and then hope that they return it, which is very unlikely. This causes an absolute nightmare and we are getting away from these. So if you buy a facility with um, a, a unit like this, it's okay, you can get rid of that. You, you can see over here that we have pulled it out and we have gone with requiring tenants to bring their own locks and install on the doors themselves. Now, because we require tenants to bring their own locks, that is another thing that we're taking off of our plate. We don't have to meet the tenants here. Once they check out online, they're gonna receive an, receive an automated text and email saying, hey, here's your unit number, take your own lock, the unit is good to go, and you're ready to rent. Okay, so I wanna talk next about a con. The con is you're gonna have a lot of units and you're gonna be chasing a lot of 50, 60, $70 checks, okay? Inevitably, in a facility of this size, you're gonna have, you know, five, six, 10 late payers every single month. So I will show you what happens when someone is late. So the best way to do it is order what are called Da Vinci locks. They're gonna be red locks, or you, actually, you can get them in different colors, and they're gonna have a serial code on the lock. And each serial code has its own unique code. And you're gonna be able to upload these locks, these serial numbers and codes into your software so that when a tenant stops paying, you throw this red lock on their door, you tell the software which serial code it is. So that way, at any time, if a tenant calls and pays, or if they log onto the website and pay their rent, it's gonna be like, all right, thanks for your payment. The code to your red lock is such and such. And then we install a drop box, which we have down there, where they would place the red lock after they make the full payment. You're gonna be dealing with evictions in any asset class, you know, whether it is mobile home parks, apartments, single families, even storage units. Like I said, we use the red locks to lock them out of their units. And the beautiful thing about storage is you don't have to wait months to get them out. It's a very quick process. You have to serve them with um, a couple different notices saying, hey, we're gonna auction your stuff off. If you want your stuff back, you've gotta make a full payment. Now again, every state is different, but you can lock them out almost immediately after they're late. And then you proceed with giving them the correct notices. And in some states, you can auction their stuff off in less than about a month and 15 days, something like that. So check your state rules, but the point is evictions are so much easier in storage. Okay, so now for the crazy thing that happened at the storage facility. So someone over in that direction decided to take a high powered rifle and shoot at the side of our building. 
Now it's all taped up right now. Obviously it needs to be repaired, but it's taped up temporarily. And you should have seen, in fact, I will insert some of the photos of the gashes that were caused in the side of the building and the door. So what we're gonna have to do is replace this entire door, which the door itself is probably at least $500, and then another probably $500 to install it. Uh, and then we're gonna have to come up with patches for the walls. So as you'll see, the trajectory of the bullet was headed straight for the busy highway and potentially even the gas station because they entered there and then there's some exit holes coming out this side here. Pretty crazy. You just never know what you're gonna run into when buying real estate. I never thought that I'd have a problem with people shooting at the side of my building, but you know what, it happens and you gotta deal with it and you gotta expect stuff like that to happen. So yeah, owning a storage facility is so far one of my favorite asset classes to own. Um, I think that the, the automation that has uh, come about in the last 10 years of this industry has really helped operators. Things can be ran pretty much from anywhere around the world. You can hire um, a boots on the ground person for picking up trash, cleaning out units, but other than that, the call center, um, you can outsource that. You've got the software the tenant, where the tenants make the payments for their rent. Um, and as far as the auctions go, that used to be something, you know, you see the TV shows of auction wars and all that where people show up to the units. That is really a thing of the past. Um, today, you have your auctions online. You have your boots on the ground person go snap photos of the unit. Um, you list it online and that's it. You know, the person who wins it comes, cleans the unit out. Um, at least they're supposed to clean it out for you. And then you put the unit back up for rent again. Although that was not the most clear and concise pros and cons of storage and ownership, hopefully that helped you out a little bit, gave you a little better behind the scenes of, you know, how they operate. So I don't know if you have more specific questions, but if you do, make sure to drop them below and I will uh, try to answer them as far as how we operate our storage facilities and maybe some of the pros and cons to storage facilities versus other types of asset classes. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that video. As always, don't forget uh, to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, go find me on other social media platforms. You can follow me there. Make sure to hit that like button and we'll see you in the next one.